not like not living the world. So there's a there's a lot that uh, I've been kept from because there's, there's a lot of things that I did wrong. It's not it's like you said, without me even knowing it, I, I felt it in my spirit like this ain't right. Right, so, right. That's not beautiful. Oh yeah, it is. It really is. It, it, it really is. You, you said you do music. Yeah. yeah. You look familiar. Cause I met a cat in front of my house that did music, you know what I'm saying? He was out there, you know, uh, playing the CD or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I stay on Udell Street. You know what I'm saying? You look familiar, like you, you might have been him, you know? Nah, I don't know nobody, you know what I'm saying, beside right. my brother here, but you know, like, nah, you look familiar. Nah, I'm finna, I'm finna do a backflip if it was, you could, nah, nah. then you out here getting this, right. you know? Nah, I, I yeah. wasn't, that wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, that's, that's what I do, so. Yeah. Going through the avenue is how I discovered my whole life. My life. I stuck up there. It is with you. I got, I got a scripture for you. This is Job chapter 30, verse 1. It says, But now they that are younger than I have me in derision. Now, who is it talking about? They that are younger than I. It's talking about the so called white man. Why? Because the Lord created us first before he created the white man. See what I'm saying? Because the white man came when? Esau. That was the beginning of the white people. When right. Esau and Jacob right. was born, right. that was the beginning of the white people. Right. See, we was already established as a nation. Right. See what I'm saying? And it says that ha have me in derision. Derision mean what? Now we're being mocked and scorned by these other people. When the white folks look at us, what do they say? Nigger, right. coon, right. you know, that's us. Right. And it says, whose fathers I would have disdain to have set with the dogs of my flock. Now why did Job say he, he wouldn't even allow them to sit with the dogs of his flock? Because he know these wicked crackers would have sex with them. Who passed laws for bestiality? You white folks. What? Yeah. Look at they do this. They've been passing they can, laws. They can have sex with animals. That's right. So, Don't you know and, and it's all over, over the world now. That's right. right. It's, not, it's not new. They they they, 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 they know, know how to public now. Yeah, man, I, know, pass, I know they do, but I know they, they don't have public now. Yeah, they passed a law two years ago that you can marry your dog. Marry your dog. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. It's getting more wicked out here, man. See what I'm saying? Man, don't tell me that, man. For real, bro. That is sick. <laughs> and it says, Yea, where to might the strength of their hands profit me, and whom old age was perished? For one and famine they were solitary. Fleeing into the wilderness outside of Israel, because they did have a little plot of area in Israel known as Edom. It said, fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were eating plants and stuff. It says, they were driven forth from among men. They were dri driven out of the, the, uh, the land of Israel. We drove them out. And it says they cried after them as after a thief. You know how you chase them? Get your hands you know what I'm saying? That's how they chased them out the land. And it says, I want you to see this, to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. What's that? Caves. So the white man is what? The, the real Geico caveman. <laughs> and then when they made that commercial, EV, EV, uh -huh. a caveman yeah. could do it, they were talking about us. They took us over with it and they made fun of us today. That's, that's right. They made fun of us today. I so know they do. Now, I know they do. Now, it says, among the bushes they bray, you know, like animals do, grazing, under the nettles they were gathered together. You see, when it say under the bushes they bray, it also was talking about they couldn't talk. They were going around grunting. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know, they didn't know the, the, the natural language. Joe. Yep, Joe. Verse. You, uh, verse 30. You start one and read all the way down to Chapters, uh, 30. chapter 30. And it says, Among the bushes they bray, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yea, children of base men. They were the lowliest uh, creation on this planet. You know what I'm saying? They were viler than the earth. See what I'm saying? Because I got a book. It's called The Thirteen Tribe by Arthur Kessler. I don't have it with me. But it tells you 
that the white people, when they was in the caves, that they were so nasty, that their clothes, that they wore, like underwear or something, they would wear it until it disintegrate off their body. They didn't bathe or nothing. Their women would sit down in front of other men and scratch their coochie because they had, you know, bugs all on their coochie. See what I'm saying? That's how nasty it was. They were eating food out of their uh, own relative skull. Like when somebody die, they dig their skull out and use it as a bowl and eat out of it. That's how nasty they were. And they still nasty today. You can see it. You go over a white person's house, man, that dude will sit there and scratch his nuts and offer to fix you a sandwich without washing his hands. You see what I'm saying? So that, you know. I mean, this Bible got everything, man, you know. What else you need, you want to know about, bro? Yeah, whatever else you can tell. Uh, that's, that's so good. I'm out here to... to well, I'm out, here, I'm out here to serve you, bro, whatever questions you got. Right. I don't have any more questions right now. Okay. You know, you're, you're out here preaching, preach. Well, of course, you you know, too, you know, uh, you know, just pray for your mom because really your mom is not supposed to be preaching. Bible tells you that, you know what I'm saying? She's supposed to learn at home from her husband because that's showing really authority over me. You know what I'm saying? So just just pray for your mom on that tip, you know what I'm saying? Because you know our parents don't want to hear nothing really coming from us. They look at us like we still their babies. You know what I'm saying? But when we go to tell them about the Bible, they're like, how you gonna tell me about it? I don't want to raise you up in church. Well, you raised me up wrong. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that. So, you know, the best thing really just pray for her, you know, because even, even though she teaching still, when the, when the time comes and the Lord destroy this place, he may still have mercy on your mom through you and still may deliver her, because that's your mom. You know what I'm saying? Even though she going off, hell, my mama wicked too. You know what I'm saying? My mama committed adultery. I know this for a fact. She didn't have, when, when I was growing up, she didn't have like six boyfriends. Really, that was six husbands. Right. See what I'm saying? Because she had sex with all of them. So I know, you know, but, you know, I still pray for her, you know, even though she, because she in the church, too. She thinks she's a Bible thumper. And really, the Bible really thumping her upside the head, you know, because she don't really know nothing about the Bible. Okay, uh, okay, now the church, you understand the concept, the concept of tongues? A little bit. Okay. We're going to go through that for you, through the Spirit. So you'll get a full understanding. See, that's our job, is to, is to give you a full understanding of things. You know what I'm saying? So, where am I going to start? Uh, 1 Corinthians. Yeah, I started 1 Corinthians, chapter 14. Just really get down to the nitty-gritty of this whole tongue situation. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Yeah, this is beautiful, man. Okay, you said 14 and 1. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. See, now what is charity? Charity is love. You know what I'm saying? Love for who? Your brother, your people, Israel. You know what I'm saying? Keep going, bro. But rather ye that ye may prophesy. prophesy. That, that's what we out here doing now, prophesy. Really, just the word, prophesy just means to say before. Say before things happen. You know what I'm saying? Pro means before, and facade means to say or speak. That's what we out here doing is speaking about the downfall of, of America because the Lord is about to come and destroy this place before it happens. So, you know, that's all we do. Go ahead, bro. Verse 2 says, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now, what is the unknown talking about? All right, you stay where you at. I'm going to go back to Acts uh, chapter 2 to give you an understanding of what the unknown tongue was. Uh, okay, this is Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. That's what that tongue is talking about, 
is your own language from wherever part of the earth that you come from. If you come from France, you're going to be speaking French. You come from Africa, you're going to be speaking what, uh, uh, whatever the African language is. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, you get what I'm saying? So when it say for he that's speaking in the unknown tongue, speaking not unto men, but unto God, it says for no man understanding him. So by you being a Jew or an Israelite from, uh, let's say, like France, you're going to be speaking French. I might not understand you, but this brother may understand you and able to translate the Hebrew to you, you know what I'm saying, in French. You get what I'm saying? So, and it says, for no man understand him. I ain't gonna understand you, but he might. It says, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries? Like these people in church. How shall I'm Everybody look, what, what are you saying? You know, I don't know what he's saying. But all of a sudden, you may have a person jump up. Well, the Lord said that blah, 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 blah. How the hell you understand what this man saying? Well, this man don't even understand what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? The Lord don't operate like that. It says, but he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and or exhortation and comfort. Meaning what? You're supposed to make it plain to the people what you're saying. If I'm speaking to you, like uh, let's say, I say in Hebrew, call me Asha'ah. You like, what does that mean? I'm supposed to edify you and break it down. That means rise Israel. You see what I'm saying? I'm supposed to break it down to you. Not, I shut up, blah, 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 and you just looking like, what did he just say? And I can't even break it down because I don't even know what I just said. You get what I'm saying? And it said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. So those people that's in the church, they're going off because they're not edifying nobody. You see what I'm saying? They're supposed to break it down to where you can understand. Now, if I'm saying, I should know my, I should know my love, and you're like, well, what would you just say? Man, I don't know. Right, right, right. Go ahead, bro. I've always been talking. So we had a pop in that book. I'm not, I'm just saying. I know, I know. I know. So, so I see you have it there. Yeah. Now, I, now I, went, I, I saw a couple of videos y'all did you know, concerning that, too, but since we're here, like, man, I'm face to face. Right, right. Uh, you, Jeremiah, what is it? Uh, what's it, 34? Jeremiah 36 and 4. Now listen to this carefully. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, right. the son of Berea. And Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord, which he spoken unto him. Now what does this say? Upon a roll of a book. Okay, you start right there, bro. Now what does this say? That's Baruch. Same thing Jeremiah told Baruch to write down all the words that he said in the roll of a book. This is that roll of a book. Baruch was a scribe for Jeremiah. See what I'm saying? <laughs> so this okay, is... So, so, okay, so that's proof that this was authorized by Jeremiah. Okay. Now, why are you saying that it's not? Okay. See, why, why, are they, why are they trying to keep that from being part of the fight? Why do they don't want us to know about it? Okay. There's an example of why. Because uh, see, these are the 14 missing books out of the Bible. Here's Second Ezra chapter uh, 13, verse 4. This is an example of why they don't want you to know about this book. Uh, Second Ezra, chapter uh, thirteen, verse four. Second Ezra, 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 chapter thirteen, verse four. Those are the ten tribes. 
which were carried away, which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, when Solomon Nazar, the king of Israel, led away captive. See, this is during the Assyrian captivity. Now those ten tribes are talking about from your, your Latin all the way down to the Native American uh, tribes. See what I'm saying? And he carried them over the waters, and so came they, they into another land. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into the further country where never mankind dwelt. 42. They that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own lands. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passage of the river. For the most, for the most high, then showed signs for them and held them still in the flood. See, now, hold on one second. Now, it's a proven fact that the roughest part of waters around the earth is where? Around the, uh, what they call the Horn of Africa. See what I'm saying? That's the roughest part on earth of water. That's what the Lord told me, and he held still the flood. See what I'm saying? The roughest part of water, because that's how uh, Columbus knew how to come over here. Basically, they knew to take this path because King Solomon was sending people over here to America, too, to get exotic animals, gold, trees, and everything, and bring it back to the land of Israel. So they already knew about the passage coming here, but the Native Americans and the Latin tribes took that same passage and, and came over here. Keep reading. That's why it said to a land where no man ever dwelt before. Talking about over here. Keep reading, bro. So they were passed over. See? So they were passed over. Keep reading. For thou, for through that country there was a great way to go. See? Namely of a year and a half. See? It took you, it'll take you, back then, on their boats or whatever, it took you a year and a half to get over here to this land. That's why if you read two in Kings about King Solomon, it said it roughly took him three years to make that voice going and coming back to the land of Israel with those animals. See what I'm saying? That was talking about over here to America. And the same region is called Asura. See, if you look that up, the word Asura, it would tell you the region known as America. See what I'm saying? That's why they didn't want you to know about this book too. Also, another hint, we all learned about this creep in school. First Maccabees chapter, uh, uh, first Maccabees, what is it? One, yeah, chapter one. Start at seven. Chapter one, verse seven. This is another reason why they didn't want you to know about this book too. Macedonia. See what I'm saying? But he, we know him as an Edomite, a boy lover, you know. Yeah. Read. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. And after his death, they put all crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils were mul multiplied in the earth. See, when the white man came into power, it said what? Evils were multiplied in the earth. Because see, when Alexander died, his four generals took over. You know, Cassandra, uh, Lysimachus, Antiochus, and, uh, man, what was the other one name? Cassandra, Lysimachus, uh, Antiochus. Man, I forgot the other one name. It was his four generals. Let me see. I got him written down again. Because see, all this, this deals with, you know, with history also. Let's see, it was... Mm. 
me see here, because I don't want to misquote no names or nothing. But this is real important. Our people already been lied to for so many years. So when you bring out information, you know. Uh, there you go, the four generals. over when he died and that's when the Bible said evils were multiplied in the earth because you know through them what the Ptolemaic line and the solution line you know what I'm saying dealing with different you know di different uh, time periods in history you know what I'm it's a lot to, to go over but I'm just giving you the synopsis of it but this is why they didn't want you to know about the apocrypha either to tell you when the white man came into power through Alexander you know the, the Greek you know what I'm saying through that Greek in Roman dynasty, you know. So they took these 14 books out the Bible because these 14 books are powerful books, man. You know, uh, the Bible. So it's a total of 14? Yeah, it's a total of 14. Uh -huh. that, yeah. They kept out of the Bible? Yeah. Because the original Bible, if you get to 1611, you will see the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, then the New Testament. Yeah, they took that out of there. Right, they didn't want you to know about the history of them. Which the Bible tells you the history of them too, but they didn't want you to know the history of them coming into power. You know what I'm saying? And taking over the land. Cause see, it's a big mystery in the church. They don't know how the white man came about. They tell you that the Israelites are done away with. All these people in the Bible done away with. That's not true. We still here today. Oh, I believe that. You know? I believe that. I think Revelations kind of pretty much clear that up. That was the case of you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. What is he coming back for? <laughs> right. You know. You right, bro. You know what I'm saying? And what other questions you got? Because we're going to answer your questions. Nah, it's, it's cool. It's you cool. Know? I, mean, I mean, I'm sure I can think of some more stuff. I, I got to get going, but okay. that's why I said I want to sit down, man, and, and, uh, and talk with y'all. Okay. You know, some more. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, I've been telling people about that. About so what's that? That Obamacare artifact. Oh, shit. man, yeah. see? You <laughs> already know what's going I, on. I, I, I told you I know I what's going know on. But see, on. like I said, y'all telling me stuff. I'm telling people stuff that I'm not aware of. I'm talking about us. Right. I know what's going on with the world. Right. Right. I know about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. We out here every Saturday at 3 o'clock, right? That's right. 